after you finish the final edits on your timeline and before you do the final production and sharing steps, this is the best time to optimize your audio. To do so, first you want to isolate any audio tracks that you're not going to be working on. And as you can see, I have locked out the music track on the Audio 2 track. Next, click on the Audio tool and that brings up the Audio menu. Your first stop will probably be Enable Noise Removal. Notice that whenever I click in Enable Noise Removal, Camtasia automatically selects a portion of the audio to remove noise from. You may or may not be happy with that automatic deletion. Go ahead and play back part of your audio that you're working on and see whether or not you like it. Usually you won't. It will probably be necessary to click on Advanced to expand your timeline until you are on an area of no talking or no music, only background noise. Then highlight that portion using your time scrubber. Then go back up to the audio tools and click on Use Manual Noise Selection. Clicking on that will apply the noise removal, we'll first sample it, and then apply that noise removal to the entire clip. As you can see, the default by default, the slider is set on 100. Again, that is probably going to be too much. It is probably going to be necessary for you to highlight manually a selection and bring down the slider to your lowest level where you think you can remove noise but preserve your voice. And then gradually work that slider back up until you've gotten to the point where you have removed enough of the noise and yet not distorted your voice. Another tool is what Camtasia calls Enable Volume Leveling. This is its normalization tool. And there are three settings on it. Watch what happens whenever we click on each of the three settings. Here you see the waveform on the low volume variation. Here is the waveform on medium volume variation. And here is the waveform with the highest volume variation. I have never used high volume variation with any success whatsoever. If any leveling is applied, whenever you bring a clip into audio, I recommend that it be the low volume variation. Medium, if you haven't done any prior work to it. Also, I have not had any luck with the so-called voice optimization tools. As you can see, it's divided into male and female. And, and for some reason, I sound a lot better on female. Not sure what to make out of that, so maybe we should just take off voice optimization. Here are some other Camtasia audio optimization tools that I really, really like and that are a part of Camtasia Studio 7 for the first time. One is audio points, the ability to add precise points to create an audio envelope that you can change. First, we need to expand our audio line. You need to get a really close-up view. And then say you wanted to increase the volume of just a few frames. Maybe you dropped an S, you dropped an ED. The first thing you do is to set an anchor, or I call it a preservation point. It's the point before which nothing's going to be changed. Then I move in a frame or two. And then I set the first point where I want to begin the change. Then I move my cursor over to cover the full area, the number of frames during which the audio is going to be changed. As you can see, I'm having to expand it a little bit. I set an audio point that's going to mark the end of the changes. And then I set my uh, preservation point. Now with those four points, what I can do is move that middle line 
up or down to adjust the actual audio that is in no more than what is that five or six frames let's say I dropped an S which I often do I can raise the volume just on that S or just on that ED very very precise audio correction tool I also have a problem with breathing I'm a very loud mouthy breather when I narrate something so you often hear me intake air and then I have to go back and get rid of that air so what I usually do is to highlight the portion that has my obnoxious breathing in it then go up to the fade in tool and as you can see I can fade out any of the obnoxious breathing leading up to the actual part where I make words instead of noisy breaths. You can also add audio points to the standardized uh, profiles here. Let's add an audio point here and I can bring down my breathing, eliminate that noise in an even more precise manner by simply clicking on that audio point. And as you can see, dragging down and eliminating that little area there where you can hear my breathing. Once you have done your audio optimization, it's then time to produce and render. And you're ready to go up to produce and share. Now, whenever you open up the production wizard, you're going to see a lot of presets. And these presets are very, very helpful because they enable you to target your video size, your video resolution, into a very tight package. Web here is a great package. It produces a folder and in this folder you will find your video in an .mp4 format, H.264, embedded in an HTML, HTML file for you. It also has a nifty first frame grab and it basically produces a really nice package and you can upload this folder to any server that you have access to. Share to YouTube is also a great preset. Uh, Camtasia folks have analyzed the optimum settings for YouTube and reproduced them in this YouTube preset. You simply select it, click on Next, and provide your login information, and then provide the different information for your video, its title, its description, any tags you want to provide. Honestly, I've never been able to get Camtasia to upload successfully to YouTube. So um, I just go ahead and fill in anything, click on finish. I let Camtasia render the video in its YouTube preset. And then at the end of that rendering process, when it goes to attempt to upload to YouTube, you get an error message and in that error message you're asked if you want to save that video whether you want to try again to log in or whether you want to delete it I just go go ahead and save the video that has been produced by Camtasia in the YouTube preset then I use my normal uh, YouTube account process of opening up your YouTube account clicking on the upload tool and then following the usual procedure for uploading a video to YouTube. There's the file that Camtasia produced for me. And then I will fill in the legitimate information, title, description, tags, category, and privacy settings that will be the final settings of the final information provided for the YouTube upload. The YouTube preset produces a high resolution MP4 file that is also compatible with the other video sharing sites, Dailymotion, Vimeo, etc. So it's a good final render to have in your folder that you can use in a lot of different places.